My oh my, has it been quite some time. If you guys haven't been following me since I did take a little bit of a month of hiatus, which will be explained in this video, I have taken this bar lounge situation that is in my like pool house area and have gradually transformed it into a room I can actually make over. Starting with the subfloor, going to the drywall, doing a roof. I mean, I've legitimately done everything in this room to bring it back to life. And now is our day to finally complete it. One thing that I like to do on this channel, you've seen me here hopefully do a couple of times, is taping it out. When in doubt, tape it out. So if you have a wall that you're not quite sure, one fun way, specifically with this accent wall that I'm planning since it has to do with mirrors, is taping out and using two different colors. So the blue is where these mirrors I've been collecting and thrifting over the last couple months will lay. And then the tan tape that you see is actually where the studs will be or the quote unquote framing I will add to then adhere the MDF to securely versus going through the mirror, I can hit the wood going into the drywall into the stud and not crack the mirror. I thought I could remove the previous adhesive from the thrifted mirrors, but when I went in with the multi-tool, it actually scratched through the front, so I avoided that completely and just added adhesive to where the previous adhesive was already uh, to just avoid any scratches on the thrifted mirrors since, dang, mirrors are expensive. You will see a combination of adhesive, mirror adhesive, and these mirror clips that are found at your local hardware store. The mirror clips will not be staying there. They are to hold the mirrors in place until the adhesive fully dries overnight. I just repeated that to the remainder of all the mirrors. For those of you who do not know, hot guns have a little hole on the side. You snip the chair. As I thrifted each mirror, I started to design the wall. So right now it looks like I'm throwing up mirrors willy-nilly. I am not. It is all per what I have collected over the last couple of months, which will all come together after we complete this accent wall, obviously. Now we just need to repeat that. <laughs> Everybody, did you hear that? He's wearing his strong pants. I'm not wearing any pants, but I'm wearing a bikini, so. Okay, well we hung that. With the help of Mr. Brett, the battery died. You can see him in the reflection. Now this will not be like any other accent wall that I have seen quite yet, um, but if there are, please comment down below and share, I would love to see it. How I went about going, adding the arches to this is purchasing three quarter inch MDF. Now this is very heavy to move on your own, so if you're going to do that, I would go back and buy the light version. I did not know that that was available till after, but I digress. How I moved forward was per the design of how I laid out the mirrors, I started to cut out arches and how I cut those out we're using chalk lines, just going about the measurements per where the mirrors were on the wall and then going in with my circular saw up until I hit an arch point and then I went in with my jigsaw and then took out that arch where the mirror would shine through. I didn't record any of that. I would not recommend moving a mirror this large by yourself. I would have been so sad if that thing cracked, but I just had to keep pressing through to try to get this makeover as quick as I can to you guys. But you know, fun fact, it's been a month. My apologies. I moved forward with installing all the mirrors, making sure they're perfectly glued and with the furring strips on the outside. Now that is where I'm going to be screwing into so it does not hit the mirror. Again, like I said that before, I do not want to shatter the mirror. I want to be able to secure the MDF to something 110%. The next day I went in and lightly sanded everything down. I tried to sand the curves as much as I could, but I should have been a little bit more patient and gone slower with my jigsaw to get that perfect curve. I did not, however, and you learn as you go. The heat just had me a little impatient, but now that I've worked on it for long enough, I think I know how to work around it. Cute, so cute. So exhausted, but so cute. I added adhesive to where I was going to be screwing the MDF so when they came into contact there was something there that was holding it overnight to secure the bond and I took it one panel at a time. Fun fact, you have to order the special rollers. You cannot just pick those up. So that's what I just did and I'm gonna use a regular roller now because I did not plan ahead. If you haven't watched my drywall episode, I recommend you do so. There are way more knowledgeable people out there though, but I previously seamed together the boards similar in the way that I seamed together these panels before I painted over them to look like one giant piece. 
Oh, I said love it. I mean love it. You can see all my imperfections with my cuts, but I love it. Yes, I do. I'm gonna oodle. I'm gonna oodle while it dries. It was worth it, the blood, sweat, and the tears. I'm liking where it's headed. There's definitely some work to be done. It's not perfect. Perfect is not fun. Okay, Brad, here we go. Oh my God. No, absolutely not, absolutely not, I'm selling the house. Like, wow. One area that really held me up was the ceiling. I went back and forth with how I wanted to make it an accent ceiling. And quite frankly, that pushed back the schedule already seven days, which was a little bit frustrating. Once I decided to kind of just pull the trigger and move forward and see if it actually worked because I was a little bit, like I was a little bit intimidated since this is the first full room makeover on the property. I moved the support for the roof to be one continuous line down the middle because I was going to do faux DIY accent beams to hold up the bamboo that I was going to incorporate up on the ceiling, kind of bringing the exterior shade overhang interior and giving that Tulum-esque vibe. I hung up each sheet of bamboo after cutting them down to size with a simple staple gun and then went ahead and moved forward with cutting down select pine down to size that I wanted to. I went on the smaller side of things, hand distressed them just by hitting them with a couple of tools and then stained them my desired color to play off of the couch and the leather that I was going to be using to decorate the space. I was a little bit finicky with how these quote unquote beams were going to look. I know they don't look super luxe, but that's not the point. I like when you're at different Airbnbs out here in the desert and the wood is weathered, it is on the thinner side, but it's holding up this like beautiful structure or this beautiful texture to the place that you're in. So that's what I played off of. After I installed it, I stepped back and I oodled, always oodle. not working i was driving my mic no i just uh wanted to take a second to actually let you know while i'm using them why i love raycon earbuds so much and quite frankly it's because they're completely noise isolating i will let rachel with voice take it over shortly you know I had too much fun on my birthday but i really do enjoy the fact that they are so noise isolating they actually are comfortable for my ears they have like weird ears i feel like everything hurts my ears and i can wear these for basically the entire time that i'm working because it has such a long battery life and they don't hurt my ears so just want to pop in here give you real time integration i feel like everything's been very like staged even though me going up the ladder and coming down was staged Raycon is really disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound available for everybody. Their wireless earbuds start at half the price of other premium audio brands. Raycon earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, which is a personal fave of mine, and a more compact design for a comfortable noise isolating fit. I even have to take one earbud out because now I'm terrified that I'm not hearing snakes when they're sneaking up on me. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. There's really something for everybody. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Brandy, Mike Tyson, they are all obsessed with Raycons. They even have a 45 day free return policy. So if you guys do want to check it out, you can click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash Mets to get 15% off your Raycon purchase today. Again, you can go and click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash Mets to get 15% off your Raycon earbuds today. Honestly, thank you so much Raycon for sponsoring your girl each month. I am of love with mine. I hope you guys go and check it out. Now let's get right back into the project. I let Patrick live out here because he honestly kills all the rats and maybe some of the Thormans, but I always have to keep an eye out for him. He's not harmless to me at all. He's just big and scary, but he's not been missed, Callie, or to me. He just eats rodents and things. This is single-handedly why this video took a month and why I have been dark for so long. And that is because it took me three weeks in total to pour the floor successfully. I started by prepping the subfloors by sealing it with some caulk all around where I saw gaps. Prior to sweeping up the debris and removing any uneven spots before I added an adhesive to the subfloor to then pour a self-leveling basically concrete on top of it that you typically use for under laminate to be a DIY cement floor. 
first attempt right off the bat when we poured i thought it was going to be successful but i realized how quick it dried and i immediately thought well you never considered the heat so that was my lesson with number one attempt and the fact that i should be doing it with someone even though schmoody is great i should be doing it with someone that is on a carpentry level that understands the material that i'm working with if you're going to have help oh none of that was recording don't worry because it sucks when i'm looking for mr patrick i've decided to name the gopher snake because he is not dangerous but this is my first reaction to the floors i'm like so i was so upset yesterday okay oh they're so uneven but they're not bad so i just need to pour a ton on <laughs> all right well you can see the different pours i did and where it started getting I just don't think it was watery enough. That's that's my only conclusion. All the videos made it look so easy. It's all over everything, but that's fine. I'm gonna pour up more and then I'll clean that off later. But that's what we got right now. Ay, 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 this whole thing's a process. So basically we're gonna pour one giant watery pour to hopefully cover this entire thing. I only got six bags. I should think I should have got 10. Hi, I'm doing this in a bathing suit. I'm so fucking irritated right now. So. I am beyond irritated because my drill just caught on fire. This just flew on, caught on fire. And now I have this just sitting here drying after just going to buy all those bags. Are you kidding me? So now this is just gonna dry like this because I cannot mix it anymore. It's too, it's drying too much on itself for me to do it by hand. And I only have one drill. Dramatic but deflating and this is the reality. This is three weeks of this project not going my way and here we are. The drill caught on fire when I was trying to mix that up and lit up my arm, super fun. Um, it just got my hair though. Let me to guide it and I don't have to lift it. Does it hurt you? Am I doing any work? All right, let's see. Chop lips, desert, this sorting. Okay, so I know it looks like I've taken a month off, but as you can see right here now with that wheelbarrow full of concrete, things haven't been going my way at all on this project. So instead of trying to bump out four videos a month for you guys, I've kind of just gone dark and I am trying to slow down. And my channel is about showing you how a person first time is really attempting to do something on their own. But I'm happy to be back. And I took a breather yesterday with some really lovely humans and I'm feeling really good. Moving that wheelbarrow is great, number one. Perfect, that's out of sight, out of mind. We will be reusing that for a planter somewhere else on the property. I'm not gonna just like chuck that and get rid of it. Number two, the heat. I have to work around it just for my health and also because the concrete needs to dry. So now, number three, we have to wait till like 7.30 to pour. So it's not too hot for the, for what happened to me with that wheelbarrow to happen again. So right now, I'm gonna go snake hunting, feed the critters, and then I'm gonna pour the floors later. That's another reason why this project has taken so long, it's because I have to wait for the heat, right? Since it's an outside situation. I attempted to take it bucket by bucket in threes by myself and it immediately did not work. Okay, I'm officially giving up on this. What I should have just done is put cement board or plywood on top of the sub floors and painted it. Now I have a huge mess to clean up. Okay, the floor is a mess. It's super, super high over here. I might have to jackhammer, but I just kind of laid it on top of the mess over here and the nice over there. And it is very close to being level. Mr. Mike from Modern Builds offered to execute a plan he had in his head to help me recover this floor. And if it didn't work, he would help me recover it no matter what it took. And I am grateful that he had patience because it took quite a bit. His idea was to like, basically bulk mix and pour each bucket, but fast forward to it just not working once again. Here's a little fun fact. Don't do anything concrete yourself. A little learning lesson. Yeah, I mean. Even Mike and I just made an agreement. If we ever talk about doing concrete that's over two bags, we are immediately telling each other no. Yes, accountability partners. Mike's bulk way didn't work. And towards the end, the last three buckets, we kind of did it my way and it ended up working pretty flawlessly, even though this round of the floor was almost a wash immediately. Mike is very excited that we saved this potentially. Oh man, 
I thought I came over here and just made your whole project even worse. <laughs> oh, you're filming me. Yeah. I thought I just was gonna show up, <laughs> fix it, be the man, and then I showed up, <laughs> thought that I ruined your project even worse than it was when I got here, but we're okay. Yeah. We're okay. We're just gonna, what we've learned is do not touch it. Let it naturally yeah. do what it's doing and then we'll fix what we did touch in the middle. Question mark? But it's way better than anything I did by myself, so. It is currently 6.24 a.m. Mike just left because he showed up and looked at the floor and just admitted defeat, which I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm really trying not to cry. I'm just over this whole process of the floor. I wish I learned, um, you know, with my jacuzzi pad, I thought I did just to get a team. And so now I'm gonna try to source a team because now I'm adamant on having a floor. I, I refuse to go the other way and get plywood. But if it doesn't work out, uh, I'm gonna DIY some floors. Mm. All right, so Mr. Mike and I came here to do like a substitute plan, which was to do a plywood floor. Fun fact, that's gonna be more expensive than trying to re-pour. Um, and this Home Depot out here in the desert literally has nothing. So I would have to drive into Palm Springs to pick out my wood. You know, just fun and stuff getting this bar done for you guys. Mike and I literally just said concrete never again, but after getting a quote for $1,600 and plywood being $100 a sheet, it's actually the cheaper way. But well, hopefully tomorrow, when I fast forward to 5.30 in the morning with Mr. Mike, this floor is poured and looking a cute. Do concrete one more time tomorrow morning. Here's the way to successfully pour a self-leveling concrete floor. Now, it can be poured up to two inches, so you really can do it. I would highly recommend having two mixers, but it did work with Mike and I for an eight by 12 room. By me being the pourer and him mixing two buckets consistently, so no matter when I was done pouring, I always had another bucket to pour directly after. I also did not touch it whatsoever and let it do its magic by itself. All right, well, it went successfully. We literally just took it bucket by bucket and we're just right here now. Two weeks and a load of concrete, but I'm happy now. It looks good? Yeah, it looks like 1-800 Super Pro. You don't have to burn your house down and move to Europe? Uh, well, I might still do that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, so this is a great way to start a day, 110%, but you guys don't get that, do you? That's a sign it's gonna be a great day. I am so happy I did not give up and I pushed forward with the idea of these floors. I then sealed them with a wet look sealer so it just looks like wet concrete. It's an eco-friendly one that I picked up from Home Depot. I will link it down below for you and I foam rolled it on. I would highly suggest spraying it. I think that will give you the best results even though the foam roll doesn't look bad whatsoever. Good morning, Thormund. How are you? It's okay. She's not gonna do anything. She's learning to love you. Callie, gentle, mama. Callie, Bella, Rodriguez. Callie, gentle. Gentle. He's a good, he's a good girl. That was a good girl. He's friend, not food. So when they eat close to you, it means they trust you more apparently. She's not a fan. I know, it's okay. I just want you to be gentle with him. So I want you to see him for a couple of times. Hi, Thormund. For the final touches, I opted to get a custom neon sign that says this must be the place because there is an original metal sign on the outside of my workshop that says that. So I wanted to pay homage to the OG that owned this home. I purchased these light fixtures from a local shop here in Joshua Tree and then I DIY'd these rope hanging that were gonna mimic the light fixtures that I purchased that didn't get here in time. So I just DIY'd something really quick to be able to hang it from the ceiling to show you guys. These won't actually function, but I thought it'd be nice to see them in the space. The height is a little low for me right now, but I've learned, oh, hi, Thormund. He got in a fight, this guy. Hi, I got you. You okay? Desert life. Desert and single life. Okay, let me put this up. 
And then we're gonna DIY a piece of art, and I think we're good. I am really into reusing the materials here on my property since there are so many things I could be using, but these in particular are actually from the makeover that we are doing, but the before stage. I am using these two pieces of wood to create a rod for the curtain, which I will later turn into a plant hanger. Right now it's going to be a drape rod up until I can tackle the whole turning my window into a walk-up bar situation, which is gonna be really fun. Will not be showing too much of the reveal of the window because it is just a temporary placeholder for a DIY I am currently in the middle of, but this is a great temporary fix to be able to show you the reveal of the room thus far. To hang that drape rod, I'm gonna be attaching this to the two by four stud, and I'll be able to move freely, and then I will be latching these onto this, and then hanging them upside down from the chain, or like this with the chain right here resting. So basically hang like this from the ceiling, allowing it to move if it needs to. The drapes I will be using for future makeovers. Like I said, this is a temporary placeholder, but they are from Amazon. I've linked them down below for you. I wanted to add one more piece of DIY to this, and that was some art that I've owned since the trailer bathroom makeover. It is from Decenio, and then I am DIYing a frame with all of the lumber that I have on my property already. I have done similar DIYs here on my channel, so I'll link them down below, but just doing a basic frame, adding a backer, and then purchasing some acrylic from your local Home Depot as the topper is a great way to customize any wall art in your home. My dear friend, Mr. Benjamin Ueda, actually DIY'd this couch on his channel with one sheet of plywood, so I'll link that down below for you. And he started a custom cushion company, which I was grateful to be able to get gifted this whole couch and cushion setup. Again, I will link everything down below for you. I continue to decorate the edges of the couch, like the negative space that was available, with all thrifted finds that I've been sourcing over the last couple of months since living here in Joshua Tree for this particular room. Although this project almost sucked my soul completely, I am very excited to be able to have pushed through and share it with you now, even though it took me quite some time. I'm excited to learn from the ups and the downs moving forward to know it will keep me productive and on the straight and arrow, and also which will not drain me completely, which won't defeat my creativity. We are just getting started, people. I know it's been a bit, but Rach Babe is back with a fire under her booty that cannot be ignored. I am so excited to bring you so many more makeovers, and I am just thankful that I have you guys in your patience. I will see you soon for another DIY.